Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video review for this week. And for this one, we're going to be taking a look at No More Heroes 3, the third chapter in the No More Heroes saga for the Nintendo Switch. And if you're interested in my any gameplay footage of me playing the game, I'll have a link down in the description down below. Or you can click on the card that will appear up on this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And for any parents out there, it's worth pointing out that No More Heroes 3 is rated M for mature audiences only. Ages 17 up by the ESRB. Uh, it's been about... 13 years, if I'm in the right date correct, since the original No More Heroes came out back in, on the Nintendo Wii back in 2008. And this was the, I believe, the second game from Suda51 that has been released on the Nintendo console outside of Killer7, although there may have, he may have done other ones, but those at least are the ones I'm fully aware of at least being released here, out here in the West, though. And No More Heroes was sort of a, was also an interesting game because it introduced to us, like with Killer7, Suda 51's style and approach when it comes to the game though and it still to this day holds up very well even though some of the stuff at least released back on the Wii may be a little bit um maybe not look as good as compared to when it was released to the recent release on the Nintendo Switch. The game saw two releases though um No More Heroes 1 and 2 and both are still a good game good games nevertheless but the series kind of went on hiatus for a bit until 2017 when Suda51 appeared during one of Nintendo's presentation that was talking about the um their latest console at the time the Nintendo Switch. During that time we learned that a No More Heroes game was coming to the Nintendo Switch but it wasn't the No More Heroes game that people were thinking of. Instead it turned out to be one that takes place before second, but well before the third one, which I'll get to that part though, and that was Travis Strikes Again No More Heroes. This one kind of was a little bit um, controversial to some folks out there, as not everyone was a fan of that game, and while I can understand that, I still think the game was good, nevertheless, it still maintained that style that Suda51 is famous for. It just, ne to me, never reaches the height that No More Heroes 1 and 2 did. Then in 2019, during Nintendo's um, E3 digital presentation, we saw the trailer for No More Heroes 3, the long-awaited sequel that a lot of us have been waiting for, though, and it was certainly, for a lot of Suda51 and No More Heroes fans, it was certainly something that, that we were glad to see, though. Obviously, due to COVID-19, that kind of slowed down development of the game, though, but in August of 2021, we finally got the release of No More Heroes 3, and after investing some time into the game, I honestly have to say, though, the game is still good, especially for those who are Suda51 fans, though, but there is one big con that might turn some people off depending on if you're willing to tolerate it or not. So why don't we get started with the pros and cons and we'll start off first with the pros. And the first one is is Osuda 50s once style and all. Like anything, Suda51 is known for doing over-the-top style in terms of his game ranging from the art style, music, and story, and that still holds up very well in um, No More Heroes 3. Just like other games like Shadows of the Dam or Lollipop Chainsaw, it has a unique art style to it, though, and that punk kind of approach that Suda51 is well known for, though. In fact, in a way, sometimes the game kind of feels a little, the story at least, feels something ripped out of like a Quentin Tarantino movie, and that certainly isn't a bad thing. Obviously, the story follows Travis touchdowns, um, taking part in the assassination rankings, though, this time with galactic aliens of different proportions, especially with the opening that looks something ripped out of at least part of it ripped out of something from E.T. to be exact. So from the art style to the music, which is really good, and the story though, it still remains that over-the-top style that Suda51 is known for, and that certainly is a good thing though. The next thing I do want to talk about is the combat, and I will say I did enjoy the combat. I think it's easy to use and enjoyable. It is a hack and slash type of game and that may not appeal to everyone out there, but fans of the original No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2 will probably like this one though. Um, the game is supported with either the Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller. I've been playing with the Pro Controller to be exact, although you can still use the Joy-Cons if you want to and use, you know, that um, <clears throat> certain motion, shall we say, to recharge your beam baton and all. But other than that, though, um, combat is 
pretty much straightforward though. You have your light and heavy attacks. You have the ability to do special moves when you hold down the L button and push either like B, A and all and all that stuff. And of course, Travis has the ability to do some of his signature wrestling moves depending on if he stuns the enemies and so forth. So, so combat to me is it's basically hack and slash though, but it is enjoyable and easy to use. And as someone who likes hack and slash games, this certainly isn't a bad thing at all. And last but not least, I do want to talk about the open world part, at least on the positive side of it. Now, one of the complaints I had with the first No More Hero games that I wasn't really a big fan of was the open world part. While that isn't while the open world part isn't necessarily bad, I felt like it was just unnecessary it just f didn't really feel like i mean i wasn't expecting it to be like grand theft auto but i still didn't think it was that great or anything like that with no more heroes 3 i think the open world part is definitely an improvement though the world is certainly much bigger than it was in the first no more hero game to be exact and there's certainly a lot more to do i mean there are some collectibles like getting scorpions for a sushi ramen um, person and all that to picking up death death man cards to finding gene's cat and all but there's a lot more to do on the maps ranging from doing side jobs to doing some wave battles as well some hack and slash missions though so there's definitely a lot more to do it and certainly the world in no more heroes 3 is definitely i would say bigger than what it was in um no more heroes 1. <clears throat> Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two, which is the con. So, we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with our second part of our video review of No More Heroes 3 from the Nintendo Switch. So now that I gave you the pros, why don't we get started with the cons? And there's really only um, one con I can think of, though, although this does address other parts of the cons, too, to be exact. Now, as I mentioned in the pros part, I talked about the open world part and thought that the open world part was an improvement over the first No More Heroes game. And that is true, though. But at the same time, though, it also the open world part does show a bit of the, does show the game's weaknesses, and there's no denying the fact that there are some technical issues that I've ran into, especially on the parts of the the open world part of No More Heroes 3. Obviously, one of the things you do see is that the frame rate does take a bit of a hit when you go into the open world part. It does, at least from what I've seen so far, though I'm sure others may find something different, is that it runs at 30 frames per second. Um, for the most part, though, although there are times I've seen it dip back and forth, at least in the open world part, compared to how it is in the combat part, which tends to run mostly at 60 frames um, per second, though. So there certainly is that. Other times you see the game and, well, th there are times when the game looks good, but sometimes it definitely looks a bit um, ugly, though. There, it doesn't exactly look um, great, to be exact. There's obviously, you're going to see pop-ins into, basically, when you start driving around and all, though. And for some odd reasons, and this, I don't know if this is, I doubt this is every cutscenes, but there are sometimes there are cutscenes where um, some areas don't exactly load in and you get like a blank blue screen like there may be a wall and suddenly that part didn't load in and it's sort of a blank um blank blue screen um right there so it certainly there are some technical and frame rate issues and when you go into the open world part you tend to see that the most does this mean that this game is unplayable or anything like that no as far as i'm aware of i haven't ran into anything where travis touchdown falls through the world or anything like that nor have i seen anything where basically the game crashes or that fact that i have to exit the game and re-enter or anything like that based on my time with no more heroes 3 i haven't seen anything where that has happened though but the open world part definitely i do say does show some of the weakness of the game and kind of does in a way show some of the some of the limitations the nintendo switch has um in general though so yeah this frame rate can take a bit of a hit in the open world part compared to what is in the combat part and some areas 
look okay. Some areas look good, and some areas just look bad in terms of when you start looking around, when you start driving around. At least in the open world part of the game, though. Overall, No More Heroes Three is still an enjoyable and fun game, especially if you are a diehard fan of Suda Fifty One, or if you enjoyed the first or second No More Hero games, or Travis Struck again, No More Heroes though. At its best, though, the game's art style is great, especially f- from that to its music and story. That style the Suda51 is, enjo- is known for, though. The combat is still enjoyable and easy to use, at least for my time with it, though. And I will say the open world part, on one hand, does improve over the first No More Heroes game, which is which is certainly is a good thing. But on the other hand, at its worst, though, the open world part kind of does... The open world part does show some of the game's weaknesses, though, and that includes when the frame rate might take a hit, at least in the open world side, to sometimes the game doesn't look exactly that impressive at all. And there are some little technical hiccups here and there. But like I said, I haven't ran into anything that made the game unplayable or anything where the game crashed and suddenly I had to reboot the game or anything like that, though. They're just stuff that I have noticed, though. But... If you're willing to overcome some of those hurdles, though, you will find some enjoyment out of No More Heroes 3. I still think the game is still good, nevertheless, though, and fans of Suda51 or fans of the first three No More Heroes games will definitely um, enjoy No More Heroes 3, though. If this is the last time we're going to see Travis Touchdown, though, then I think it's a great way as sort of a final setup, if that's the case. If not, I would love to see him maybe train uh, someone else to take his to take up the mantle maybe shinobu maybe um his son and all that stuff but in either case though if this is the truly the last chapter in the no more hero series i'm glad we finally got the third one though i hope that's not the case but time will ultimately tell but either way fans of the no more hero series will probably um enjoy this game and might be willing to look past some of the technical or frame rate issues at least this game has on at least on the open world side of it though um it's not going to be for everyone but if it is certainly is a niche title nevertheless though but if you are a no more heroes fan you're probably going and you enjoyed the last three no more hero games then odds are you're probably going to enjoy um no more heroes 3 i enjoyed the last three and i'm definitely enjoying um this one and I would definitely recommend especially this game, especially if you're a Suda51 fan or if you're a fan of, like I mentioned before, the last three um, No More Heroes game. <clears throat> okay, uh, this concludes my video review of No More Heroes 3 for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, tell me what you guys think. Um, and again, or like I said, these are my opinion. What are yours? Did you have you played No More Heroes three um, yet? Um, have you played it on the Nintendo Switch? Um, are you ha, are you enjoying the game though? Do you think some of the technical or frame rate issues have prevent you from enjoying the game, or they really haven't prevent you at all? Do you think No More Heroes three should go to other systems, or do you think it should be a Switch exclusive? Though, do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always. Sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You can do it through PayPal Me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. Assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, wish you all a good day then. Bye!